In the last lecture, I have started discussing uh, what are the PDA that we have introduced that is equivalent to CFG in the sense that all the context free grammars for all the for every context free grammar, you know, you will have a PDA uh, accepting uh, that particular context free language and uh, any language which is accepted by a PDA uh, that is a context free language. So, so this gives you uh, you know uh, a better tool to understand context free languages uh, I mean in the lineup of automata this is this push down automaton. Okay. So, uh, in the last lecture itself I have started discussing uh, P D and C F G's are equivalent. In fact, we have done the construction uh, one side that you give me a context free grammar how to construct a P D A. In fact, I have constructed a P D A with two states. So, as given uh, here, so you give you uh, take a CFG and TPS, you consider two states P and Q, terminals, uh, whatever uh, the set of terminals will be the input alphabet, and uh, N union T, the terminals and non terminals, we are taking stack symbols, and uh, transitions we have defined. Uh, the uh, P is initial state, and the second state will be the final states, only two states. And uh, then the rules we have declared, uh, the transitions we have declared like this without uh, uh, you know you start and uh, initially by putting in uh, s into the stack change to the state q that is of course the final state for us and then what are the string that you are generating uh, by the grammar through certain rules corresponding to that you are actually uh, giving transitions like this so uh, we have done some uh, sample this thing also that a power n b power n n greater than equal to 0 that we generate through these two rules s goes to a s b epsilon these two rules. Now, these are the transitions and uh, I have shown a sample uh, computation also in P D A and here you understand that we are first putting s into the stack and then we are generating what are the string that you generate through that and then match with the string given in the input that is what we are doing. But here we have a special feature that you know the derivation that you are applying if you are having some derivation in which say for example, you start like this and you have some derivation which is getting you know x 1, one non terminal symbol say for example, a 1 some x 2 another non symbol a 2 and say for example, x 3 suppose after finitely many steps and uh, then if you are applying in case if it is the situation like this in this say this say for example, another final. So, this a 2 if it is making some terminal string y 1 say x 3. Now, you are matching with this, this is the non terminal that you are getting in the stack on the top this is the a 1 and the rest of the strings, but you have generated some string y 1 in place of a 2. So, if a 2 is there, so but we are not accessing this unless you access this a 2 you cannot apply that rule and then generate the string respective string and then you match with the input. Suppose, if this is a symbol that uh, you know uh, for which this is applied. So, what is the requirement you understand that if you have a derivation, if you have a derivation and uh, in the stack if you are generating the string which you want to match with that you have to first replace you know for a first non terminal symbol in the string. That means, such a derivation we have already talked about such a derivation is called leftmost derivation leftmost derivations. So, you know that for every derivation there is an equivalent leftmost derivation. So, if you have such a derivation in hand then what you can do uh, you can generate the string in the stack and match with that because you are having you are applying left you have having leftmost derivation. So, then the what are the rule that you are applying on the leftmost non terminal symbol you will apply and generate the terminal string and match with the input. So, this is the idea. So, what do we do? First we recall this statement if you take a context free grammar G and T P S and corresponding to every derivation say for example, S generates x infinitely many step for some x in t star we know that there is an equivalent leftmost derivation. I take this into count to you know uh, prove that what are the construction we did in fact, that works. So, for that purpose what I will do I will just let me state uh, these things if 
S produces the string X alpha through leftmost derivation infinitely many steps uh, for X in sigma star and alpha you know is a string for which the first symbol is a non terminal symbol n v star when I am writing union epsilon if alpha is there you know the first non terminal symbol. So, this is a leftmost derivation x is a terminal string. So, till this point suppose if you have generated then what I am saying. So, from this configuration on the top of the stack if you have s if in the not you know in the stack if you have s and you can com consume this x in the input from the in the state q to reach uh, to the configuration in which the stack content is alpha. So, corresponding to each such you know uh, derivation you can have this kind of computation in the uh, in the in the constructed uh, push down automaton and conversely if you take any configuration of this sort q x s and infinitely many steps you can uh, you know finish x and left if you are left with some stack alpha for some x in sigma star and alpha in v star then we can certainly have you know a, a, a derivation in the given cfg of the form s gives x alpha infinitely many steps as a leftmost derivation you can have by observing these two claims you know we can quickly conclude because from these two claims you can uh, we can conclude that what are the uh, uh, push down automaton that we have constructed indeed that works now how to prove this claim 1 and claim 2 in claim 1 we are starting with a derivation and uh, we wanted to observe this computation now what is the idea proof idea here is we can apply induction on uh, the number of steps in the derivation to get this computation you can uh, see the basis and uh, inductive hypothesis and uh, you can extend the induction and similarly in the uh, for conversely if you take the computation in this in the given uh, in the constructed grammar which is of this form you can apply induction on the number of steps in the computation and you get and you can prove that this uh, derivation in the grammar is possible so this as i mentioned we will apply induction and do that i'll be working for other uh, other, other converse part of the construction when uh, equivalence between pd and cfg so this two i'll leave it as exercise it's not a big deal because i'll be doing this in this lecture itself for other part so you can imitate and this is a very simple thing that i hope you can you will be able to do and to conclude that the what are the push down automaton we have constructed uh, indeed is equivalent to the given cfg now i will look for the converse part that means you give me a push down automaton you can construct a corresponding uh, context free grammar so i start uh, this with the uh, concept called uh, simple pda because this is one Correspond to every PDA, an equal and simple PDA we can have. First, let me tell you what is. Uh, let me introduce what is PDA. A PDA Q sigma gamma delta Q naught f is said to be simple if you take any transition p x alpha Q beta. Here, you will have, you know, the stack string, the uh, the stack string that you are popping of length should be less than or equal to one that means either empty string or a single symbol that you will pop at one time and uh, the second condition is if you have epsilon here you know then for all a in gamma for all uh, stack symbols I, I should have this kind of transition also. Now, I give this remark for every PDA there exists an equivalent simple PDA. Now, the question is how do you get it? what are the two conditions the transitions they have to satisfy any time if you want to pop any symbol from the stack either it should be epsilon or you know it should be of length uh, 1 or if you are having a transition with epsilon here then there should uh, there should uh, there should be a transition for each symbol a in gamma with this kind of thing now the second one can be achieved very easily whenever you have such a transition you take each symbol uh, a from gamma and then write a production rule of this sort corresponding to each element of gamma through which you know you will achieve this and we are not going to lose uh, anything we are not going to you know uh, change the language the reason is because this transition whatever th that is anyway lying when I introduce this is such a transition what it says whenever you are accessing a on the top of the stack 
you are temporarily removing and immediately you are putting uh, A in the stack and what was that beta. So, this particular by introducing this kind of transitions the number of transitions with respect to the size of uh, uh, the stack we are not going to gain or lose anything with uh, on the language. So, language remains same from the given PDA to this. Now, corresponding to this I will just give me a simple technique that say for example, if you have something of this sort say p x a 1 a 2 a 3 say for example, you have 3 symbols and the transition say for example, of this form say q beta. Suppose, this is your transition then what I would suggest you, you you just simply remove this transition and place these transitions of this form with uh, some new states you choose some new states which you have not uh, used uh, which you do not have earlier say for example, p 1 and then epsilon. So, this is one transition I put what I am trying to do here is instead of removing 3 symbols at once I will remove one after another that is what I do. So, now I, I am in p 1 in p 1 without taking the input I simply remove now the second symbol a 2 and change to another state p 2 and then since I am in p 2 now what I will do this x need to be consumed in the input. So, now I just consume in the at the end. So, a 3 I will pop and then connect to the state whatever you require that is q here. So, you change to the state uh, q. So, what I will do corresponding to this particular transition I remove this transition from the uh, set and I introduce these 3 transitions in lieu of this. That means, what are the purpose of this particular transition it is exactly doing this because this p 1 p 2 what I have chosen they are new states here. Say for example, if you have n number of symbols here choose n minus 1 states you remove one after the symbols and the new states correspond to each transition you know you choose and remove one symbol after another from the stack and by the time you, you know remove the last symbol you consume what are the input that you have to consume through in this particular transition given and then change to the required state here for example, q here. So, change to the required state and put whatever that you have to put it in the stack. So, through this you can understand that these two rules you know these two conditions can be you know you know achieved we can achieve these two conditions and to make uh, the given PDA to a simple PDA. So, thus every PDA can be converted to an equivalent simple PDA. So, this concept I will use this particular concept I will use simple PDA and uh, uh, given a PDA a simple PDA because now you give me a PDA first I will construct a, I will construct an equivalent simple PDA from the simple PDA I will construct a, a given uh, uh, construct a grammar CFG context free grammar. So, now this this uh, side I will consider for every PDA there exists an equivalent CFG. Okay, let me start formally the construction part let me first tell you without loss of generality let A q sigma gamma delta q naught f be a simple PDA you start with a simple PDA. Now, I construct a CFG n t here t the input alphabet sigma p s as described below. Now, I consider non terminals of this form one non terminal s for the start symbol I consider here and then the non terminals I will consider of this form. For that let me first tell you some philosophy about uh, these non terminal symbols. In a PDA what we are doing we are having this kind of situation. So, you are consulting the stack what are and you are reading the input from the given state. Now, what do what is the construction uh, non terminal symbol construction we consider things of this form p a q this kind of non terminals we have consider for a it is a stack symbol or it may be epsilon. What is the philosophy with the non terminal symbol that we consider here is when you are in the state p when the top of the stack is a say for example, when you have a here now your for example, reading and writing it is uh, this here for example, at this particular position. So, hereafter you will be reading some input here in the tape say some x you are reading. So, when you are reading this input the possibility in this push down automaton is when a is on the top of the stack you may have you may add some more symbols on the stack certain symbols and uh, you will remove because you know accepting a string input string what you have to do you have to ultimately make the stack empty we know that. So, 
between you know the situation say your current state is p when you have a on the top of the stack from here you might be adding some more symbols on the stack here and then finally anyway you have to remove a to make the stack empty so by the before uh, by the time you a uh, remove a from the stack that means we are not uh, we are not touching in between because what you may have some uh, some additions on the top on the top of this and by the time you remove a from the stack if you reach to the state q from here to here okay so it's not two things so this you may come to for example state q whatever the portion of the input that you may be able to read that set will be denoted by this non terminal symbol so this non terminal symbol denotes set of all those strings in the input such that the current state is p the current state is p what i am uh, explaining is this the current state is p and uh, when you have a on the a is on the top of the stack by the time you remove a if you reach to the state q whatever the amount of uh, input that you read whatever the input that you read at a given uh, uh, instance so all those strings will be represented or assumed to be derived through this kind of non terminal symbol that is the philosophy we use and for example if a is epsilon and that means say i don't have uh, you may have something in the stack okay let me a is epsilon that means whatever that you have say for example this portion say alpha on the top of this you might be adding some more things in the uh, stack that means without consulting the stack whatever the amount of uh, input that you read between the states p and q without consulting this stack that means the stack information whatever is lying that will be there i am not saying here stack is empty if you have a is equal to epsilon here stack you may have something but without consulting the stack i mean without touching whatever the stack information already existing you may add some more things in this between states p and q and you may remove them and you come to this same point that means whatever is existing that i am not going to change so within this between these two times whatever the input that you read that is represented here through this non terminal symbol i hope you understand this philosophy now this philosophy is uh, taken to consider this non terminal symbols so s start symbol for start symbol and for the context uh, grammar and then between uh, given any two states p and q i consider non terminal symbols of this form p a q where a is a stack symbol or epsilon and then we include the following types of rules first rule you can quickly understand because from the start symbol I, if i connect to this what is the idea from the initial state because what are the strings uh, you have to generate in this grammar from the initial state to some final state you know the st the stack to start with it will be epsilon you don't have anything now from there you come back to the same status so that means here you require epsilon so explaining this rule is much easier that's not a big deal i hope you understand so s should be connected to uh, this kind of non terminal symbols for each you know uh, this kind of non terminal symbols you will get one rule one for each non uh, final state of the given pda and then i have you know type b rule i'll explain you this and then type c rule and then the type d rule again will be easy Uh, to explain for each state if i have this p epsilon uh, sorry say q epsilon q type of non terminal symbol you know i can nullify that because from the state to the state q you know without changing the stack what kind of uh, symbols uh, whatever that you are reading that is represented by this you know anyway and in addition to that you know i can uh, say that epsilon can be uh, derived through that so this rule is easy to understand now let me come to the type b and type c rules in general you know if i explain type b with n is equal to 0 you are essentially having a, a type c rule if you take a transition of this form p x a which is in the state p by consuming the input a and the stack e, the symbol a so a can be a not uh, a stack symbol or epsilon right so because it is simple pda now if you have done this that means you are changing to the state q and you are putting x1 x2 xn inside the stack then what we are suggesting here is from p you are changing to the state q that means eventually i will leave you in the state q so the corresponding non terminal may be you know uh, the production rule may be this p a r that means you are consulting the stack with a and now 
A is removed, x1, x2, x, uh, xn is inserted. So the, that means corresponding to x1, x2, xn, these non-terminal symbols, uh, these tag symbols, you know, are representing some information of the input, right? When we are putting x1, x2, xn, these are representing some information of the input. When you are removing them systematically, what are the string that you wanted to accept? That needs to be generated in the uh, grammar that we are going to construct. So, that means, whatever the input that you have consumed that is generated here that is clearly mentioned, whatever the input that you have consumed in PDA that need to be generated. So, that is what is this and then corresponding to this x1, x2, xn. Now, for all the possible states q1, q2 and so on r say so q n minus 1 and r are all possible states because I am choosing this all possible states I give such a rule this q x 1 q 1 q 1 x 2 q 2 and so on q n minus 1 x n r and this r q i's are arbitrary. So, now the connection between this from the state p to q. Now, I will give you a sample construction then you will understand this better you know this p d a. So, for 0 power n 1 power n n greater than equal to 0 you can consider uh, the p d a as follows you take the state p read 0 you know and uh, insert 0 in the stack and uh, non deterministically i am changing because after some point of time i'll change to q and then when i have a match i'll remove you know when the input is g po uh, 0 power n 1 power n whenever there is a match you will be in final state by consuming all the in, uh, the entire input and making the stack empty through these rules that you can quickly understand and see that this particular pda accept 0 power n 1 power n now, here notice that I have considered two states and sigma 0 1 of course, in gamma I am using only 0, I am putting only 0 in the stack. However, I have considered 1 also just for the sake of you know showing this particular construction. Anyway, final state is 1 is like this. Now, corresponding to this PDA, I will just uh, give you a sample construction of context free grammar. So, first converting simple PDA, you know that what are the things that I have to introduce because here is epsilon in the first rule. Now, for all the possible uh, non terminal sim, uh, stack symbols I have to have uh, this thing and here type 1 sort of uh, uh, that uh, first condition of P simple PDA because it is anyway satisfied because in this third position all are uh, the lengths are less than or equal to 1. So, condition 1 is sim, uh, of uh, simple PDA is anyway satisfied condition 2 that I have to consider. So, then what do I do? I have to introduce the rules like this because the example considered here is p 0 epsilon here, the, here is 1 and p epsilon epsilon goes to q epsilon these two rules that I have. So, p 0 epsilon now p 0 0 that is p 0 0 that is what because now by taking the possibility of 0 of the stack symbol and now similarly here by taking the possibility of 1 as a stack symbol. I hope you understand here although this is not very much used in the stack since I have considered stack symbol 0 1 I am putting this. So, that you see that when I am constructing all and since in the PDA this has no role this has no role in the uh, you know uh, the constructed CFG also, but just for the sake of uh, example I have considered that and I am showing this rule also. Now, corresponding to P epsilon epsilon we are we are changing it to q epsilon we are changing the state changing to final state now by choosing zero non terminal symbol uh, stack symbol and similarly the possibility of choosing one as a stack symbol so these productions that i have to add in addition to the uh, given three there are four rules now you can quickly see that this is a simple pda because now the conditions both the conditions of simple pda are satisfied now, using this simple PDA, we construct CFG from A. So, how do I construct? Yeah, the first rule is saying that I have to give a production rule of this form S goes to P epsilon Q. This I have to give such a rule for one for each final state. Here, of course, only one final state. So, therefore, we have only one rule here. And type B, remember, corresponding to each transition of this form. I have to give 1 because here the transition means for n greater than equal to uh, for n greater than 0 I am giving whatever that you are putting inside x 1 x 2 x n. If something non zero non empty that if you are putting I am using this if you are putting empty then these things are not there simply x is produced q epsilon r. So, this is the distinction either it is uh, type b rule or type c types of rule ok fine. Now, let us look at that. 
So, in a type B type of rule by taking first rule and this kind of transitions you we need to introduce r equal to p when you choose the possibility p here, because you look at in the rules I have mentioned for all the possibilities of the states I have to write this kind of rule. Now, by taking the possibility p I write this rule and then for by taking the possibility q for r I take the I write this rule. Now, then you know by taking r is equal to p and the possibility is 0 p 0 right, by, by considering this because this is for rule 4 you look at rule 4 how it is because there are 2 zeros. So, in between I consider p that means, in between this I mean because I have mentioned it like this for the possibility of rule 4 you have 0 0 there. So, what I what I am doing by considering p here that is one possibility r is p and then again for 4 you have in between you can consider q this is one possibility and r is p. Now, you can consider r may be q and in between 0 0 you can you can consider p I mean this the possibility of the state and then uh, r can be q, but in between you can consider q. So, this is for uh, rule 4 the, uh, the corresponding and for rule 5 similarly this and for rule 5 by considering q in between we look at in general for r you have the possibility of p for r you have the possibility of q there are the two possible there are two states possibility. When I have considered a string whose length is greater than uh, uh, greater than 1 I can actually here there are actually two symbols sort of. So, in between what do you want to consider because this we will introduce for every uh, state for every possibility of the state. So, for rule 5 like this and one more you get now. Now, for rule 6 this rule they are all coming under type B this rule by choosing r the possibility p and q for rule 7 again by choosing the possibility of p and q these two rules 22 rules and then type C. You see now by choosing r to be p you have got this and by choosing r to be q corresponding to rule 2 we have this 23 and 24 rules and then for rule 3 corresponding to 3 that is of type C that is coming under type C you know type C means this because when you are inserting epsilon in the you know you are just popping something and uh, that is just a pop rule if it is of this form. So, essentially rule 2 and rule 3 the uh, transitions 2 and 3 are of this form. So, we are introducing these two production rules this four production rules now type C and in type D you see there are two states. So, how to nullify this particular non terminal symbol that p epsilon p goes to epsilon q epsilon q goes to epsilon. So, these are the two rules type d that we introduce. I hope you understand this construction. So, what do, what did we do? You have considered a PDA for 0 power n 1 power n there are only 3 rules, but first by introducing another 4 uh, there are only 4 uh, 3 transitions by introducing another 4 transitions we made that simple and using the simple PDA what are the four types of rules that we have uh, mentioned? We have constructed you know a context free grammar. Now, let me just give you a small uh, derivation in this context uh, in this context free grammar corresponding to a computation for 0 0 1 1 in the given PDA. You can see that this is how we are actually accepting 0 0 1 1 in the given PDA. You start from the initial state 0 0 1 1 with the stack empty you know you are reading those two zeros in the state p and then non deterministically you are changing to the state q then when you have one and you have zero on the top of the stack you just match them like that this we you know and you re, you are in the final state so so this is how the computation is considered now corresponding to this let us observe the derivation in the g i am just marking these rules in the production rules the in the constructed uh, CFG. So, from S we will consider this this you know because this is the only possibility that we have and then you see I am reading 0 in the input and we I am putting 0 in the stack that is what we did in the first step of the computation. The same thing here is shown 
so the targeted stage the final state is q that is anyway there but what is the current state now uh, i am mean continuing in the state p so that is the state p here it is shown that 0 is in the stack and i have consumed 0 in the input that means i have derived now in this derivation 0 that is what is this marked now when i have consumed two zeros in the input here i derive two zeros and then in the stack you have two zeros those two zeros are shown up so the respective production rules that i am marking here here rule uh, production 10 here production 14 as i have constructed and now i can use 20 to make this as p0 q i can make it as q0 q and now I can uh, rule 26 use you know you produce 1 then q epsilon q then q epsilon q can be nullified and then this 0 0 1. So, the leftover thing is q 0 q and then 0 0 1 1 q epsilon q rule 26 I use and then finally, you know this q epsilon q again I use 28 rule uh, uh, production rule 28 to show that 0 0 1 1 is generated in this. Now, so this is just a sample construction and this philosophy I hope uh, you know uh, through this particular example what are the uh, corresponding to the computation what are the derivation I have shown I hope you understand what is the philosophy behind in you know uh, introducing such a non terminal symbol and then once we understand that then the, uh, the proof part of uh, uh, proof part will be easy. So, just I display this uh, this derivation because the non terminals the importance of the non the way that it is uh, uh, you know introduced you understand. Now, what I prove the construction is valid to show the construction is valid that means, the uh, what are the grammar constructed indeed generates the language expressed with the given PDA. What I do? I prove this statement. You take any two states P q and a symbol A, a stack symbol or epsilon and any string terminal string that means, uh, input string I can call here sigma star. We claim that this non terminal symbol P a q in finitely many steps if it can derive x this non terminal uh, x of course, in the grammar. Then this kind of configuration that means, this is the stack information of course, there is nothing else right this is a configuration p x a from this configuration I will be able to get the configuration q epsilon epsilon and conversely this is what I am going to prove. By proving this you know that the constructed grammar indeed generates the language accepted to the given p d a. How? If you know the first one you will connect to this the first one you will connect to this because in the in one one rule that uh, uh, you produce p epsilon q to this you will connect and thereafter in finitely many steps suppose if you have produced x you see in this then the corresponding to the computation you know you have this computation and conversely. So, what what happens here? So, this production you have considered now in the computation suppose if you have the computation which produce which which says that I will reach to this final state q. So, from the configuration x epsilon if I can get infinitely many steps q epsilon epsilon then what is the meaning of that? through this you know we are getting this x as this and conversely because this if and only if what I am going to prove if p a q derives x in finitely many steps if and only if p x a in finitely many steps you are getting this kind of configuration. So, by getting this kind of configuration so correspond to this computation this you have p epsilon q produces x infinitely many steps. 
So, if, we, if I have corresponding one to one correspondence between these two type of things corresponding to this derivation if I have this computation and vice versa you understand this x can be generated in the grammar and whenever you generate uh, from here x some terminal string you know there is a computation in this. So, that you can understand that the language generated by the constructed grammar is same as language x over the given p d a. So, we get this. How do we do this? This I will. Uh, so, let me just uh, say that x belongs to L of g if and only if x is in L of a which is equivalent to this statement. And now, the only if part that means, p a q produces x infinitely many steps. Then we have to prove this thing. We prove this this computation by induction on the length of the derivation. If the derivation p a q has only one step, because see here I can start with because this is a tra reflexive transfer closure. One can ask that okay, what about uh, you know for the basis considering zero steps? You know this is a non-terminal symbol. This is a terminal string. You know here non-terminal symbol cannot be you know a terminal symbol here this type of uh, a special type of symbols that we have constructed and therefore, here I cannot assume 0 number of steps. So, let me assume you are getting this in one step that is how the basis I have started with. Then automatically you understand this arrow x this non terminal symbol arrow x has to be a production rule if it is in one step. So, then it is a production rule of type d if it is a production rule of type d you can understand a equal to x equal to epsilon and p equal to q. So, that you have p x a is equal to q epsilon epsilon. So, this configuration and this configuration they are equal and 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 hence you are producing this configuration in 0 number of steps and finitely many steps. And if you this is the basis. So, basis is very clear from this. Now, inductive hypothesis if you take a derivation of this form p a q produces x in uh, you know if you are getting that in k or fewer steps then this configuration gives this configuration in uh, finitely many steps. So, if the derivation is of length k or less than that then you are getting this in some finitely many steps that is what is inductive hypothesis. Now, you take a derivation of k plus 1 steps p a q gives x in k plus 1 steps. Then let me rewrite this derivation of this form p a q produces alpha in the first step and after that this alpha produces x in finitely many steps let me assume like that. Now, what is the possibility for this alpha? Now, then the rule p a q alpha is either of type b or type c you know it cannot be type a right type a is of the form s goes to something of this kind of non terminal symbol. So, it is not of type a or it is not of type uh, it is not of type you know d because we have here k plus 1 steps. So, it is not of uh, that we, we have considered. So, this is either type b or type c form. Now, if it is of type b let me consider this case then alpha then for n greater than equal to 1 we write alpha is equal to y p naught x 1 p 1 and so on something of this form. So, that you know you have this transition rule in the given PDA. I have this kind of production rule means there should be corresponding to this there is a transition. Now, what I will do I will write x to be you know of this form y y 1 and so on y n because this is a terminal string now I will break them into this uh, y 1 y 2 y n of course, y is already shown corresponding to each non terminal symbol that it is deriving in the given derivation such that this particular non terminal symbol here is producing y i the component y i in the terminal string that y i can be epsilon also that is a different uh, uh, I mean uh, that can be the situation. So, thus for each i these derivations because the total derivation is of k or fewer steps whatever we have considered here and thus whatever that we are producing the string since it has k or fewer step I mean it is in k steps. So, this each such derivation is of k or fewer steps very clearly 
and therefore by inductive hypothesis you know you get from this configuration to this configuration in the PDA this is the inductive hypothesis. Now you see now combining these computations I can observe that P x a that is P y y y 1 and so on y n a can give that P naught so that y you have consumed that means you have read and you have x 1 x 2 x n in the stack and then when x 1 is removed you have consumed y 1 in the input and so on when p n you have this. So, if it is so what do you what did you what did I get then p x a infinitely many steps I have q epsilon epsilon if this is rule of type c then it is very quick then uh, it is of the form y r epsilon q and uh, this can be the transition corresponding to that and where uh, now x can be written as this y z for some z in sigma star. So, that you have this computation you will get this computation in the P D A. So, if you have the derivation what did I get? So, uh, by assuming what is called uh, uh, by inductive by inductive hypothesis on the length of the derivation we have observed that you get that particular computation in the P D A. Now, conversely that if part if I assume this computation I have to show the derivation. So, we prove this derivation by induction on the length of the computation. So, what are the computation under consideration? If this computation has zero number of steps here I am saying say the for the basis I am saying zero number of steps because the possibility is there. Then if it is zero number of steps means these two configurations are same that means p equal to q x equal to epsilon a equal to uh, x a is also epsilon. So, in which case you see this derivation holds trivially as p epsilon p goes to epsilon this is a type t uh, type d production rule you see the production rule we have this kind of rule and therefore, it is possible in the constructed grammar and hence we have the basis. Now, for inductive hypothesis if a computation is having k or fewer steps then assume this derivation is possible that means, this p a q produces x in finitely many steps. So, for inductive step you know you just assume k plus 1 steps computation in the p d a and now for under than equal to 0 I can write like this because this say for example, in the first step of the computation you are having this kind of thing that means, from the stack a you have removed a and x 1 x 2 x n you would have introduced or the possibility is this x n can be a and you have consumed some <laughs> input and you have z left over in the input and after k number of steps you have the final configuration sort of this q epsilon epsilon. So, this is a possibility. So, then there is y in sigma star such that x is equal to y z that means, that y. So, p y a is a transition you know r epsilon x 1 x 2 x n this is the thing this implies that you have either this kind of transition or you know for under than equal to 1 this a is equal to x n p y epsilon is r x 1 x 2 x n minus 1 this kind of transition because this a may be there you are not uh, removing that, but you would have uh, added x 1 x 2 x n minus 1. But since what are the p d a that we have considered it is simple you know it it is sufficient like uh, the the latter case implies the former one and in any case we have this kind of uh, production rule. Now, you see the situation is correspond to this computation. So, p x a that is p y z a that is how we are writing. Now, y is consumed that what I have this r z x 1 x 2 x n this is what is there. In k number of steps we are getting this q epsilon epsilon, but in between you have to remove x 1 x 2 and so on x n these stack symbols need to be removed. So, whenever you are removing x 1 whatever the whatever the string that you are consuming from the input I call it as uh, you know z 1 and similarly for x 2 z 2 and so on by the time you remove x x n I assume that z n is consumed in the input. So, 
So, I appropriately mentioned that and the respective states intermediate states p 1 p 2 and so on. So, the computation is presented like this. So, r z x 1 x 2 x n by the time I finish uh, remove x 1 from the stack then I have consumed z 1 the remaining is z 2 and so on z n. So, similarly all this and so on by the time you finish x n you have that q epsilon epsilon as a fine configuration. This is the computation that we have considered. Now, you see this total computation here is shown up is care fewer steps and therefore, by inductive hypothesis notice that each computation has care fewer steps. Now, by inductive hypothesis you have this p i x i plus 1 p i plus 1 gives z i plus 1 you know in finitely many steps that is the inductive hypothesis and then since p y a is you know this is the transition you have to combine all this uh, uh, corresponding to that then you have this kind of production rule this is a type b. Now, combining this you get you start from p a q and then you apply that production rule type b production rule then thereafter you know corresponding to each of these symbols first you produce z 1 that from the inductive hypothesis I have got this then z 1 then this is non terminal symbol is lying and so on you will be producing y z 1 z 2 and so on z n that is how you will be producing because this z 1 you have produced and then you have a, a symbol which can be nullified. So, then this p 1 x 2 p 2 from which you can produce z 2 and so on this p n minus 1 x n p n you can produce z n. So, you have produced x. So, thus you have a derivation for x. So, this is one case and if n is 0 because you look at here if for n greater than equal to 1 then I have shown this. So, corresponding to this I have this particular uh, type d uh, type b production rule and then I have this derivation in the grammar. If n is 0 then simply you have the situation in k steps you are getting this. Now, by inductive hypothesis this r epsilon q produces z in finitely many steps and since this p a q produces y r epsilon q is a rule this is of type c then you have this kind of derivation and thus you know we have the proof. So, now you understand like you know whatever the contextual grammar I have constructed I have shown this particular uh, statement that if whenever I have some computation there corresponding to I have a derivation. So, for which what I did I have applied induction on the number of steps in the computation and uh, derived it and conversely if you consider a derivation in the grammar we have shown that the computation the corresponding to the derivation there is a computation also in this. So, that you know we have observed that the language uh, generated by the grammar constructed is essentially same as the language accepted by the given PDA. So, we have shown the equivalence like this. So, this I hope uh, you know uh, gives uh, an idea how to prove uh, based on the number of steps uh, by induction on the number of steps of the derivation or the computation for the previous one also whatever I left is an exercise. I hope you can uh, complete that exercise. So, that you observe that uh, PDA that uh, push down automata and contextual grammars they are equivalent. So, uh, with this I conclude this lecture.